I, I guess I said I'm Teal Phelps Bondaroff, the research coordinator for the BC Humanist Association. And I should start by saying that the BC Humanist Association has been providing a community and a voice for humanists, atheists, and agnostic and non-religious people in Vancouver and British Columbia since 1982. And we're really proud to support humanism across the province and to do things like this, like events and meet and greets, and also research advocacy and a whole host of other things. And I'm joining you from the traditional territories of the Lukongwin and uh, Lukongwin peoples, who are currently represented by the Songhees, Esquimalt, and Wasanic peoples, whose historical relationship still continues to this day here in Saanich. And what I'm going to do is introduce our amazing speaker, um, who's going to give a presentation, and then we'll have some time for questions, and I'll let Kathleen decide how long the questions go. I understand that Kathleen has a book chapter due, so we might uh, only do so many questions at the end, but we'll get some great questions in. And so without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our speaker, Kathleen Johnson, who is a diversity and inclusion specialist, and she coaches marginalized professionals, entrepreneurs, and artists. Um, she writes and speaks on various platforms about diversity issues, Kathleen founded the Critical Black Thought Society, which is a Facebook group with over 400 members. And she's the Alberta representative for Humanist Canada. And I've worked with her uh, in that capacity on a project that we're working on in Alberta. And it's really great to have her out here. Uh, I also, also should say that this past October, she represented humanist, the humanist position at the World Religion Conference on Racism. She's like myself, she's born and raised in Calgary. And uh, she comes from uh, first generation Canadians and her parents uh, are from Granada. And I believe she has a family and she wrote in her bio a family of five kids and, and a furry pet of undisclosed species. Um, it's with great pleasure that I welcome Kathleen uh, uh, Johnson to give a presentation today. I'll put some links after her talk so you can learn more about her and her work on diversity and inclusion. Kathleen, take it away. Thank you so much. I'm uh, very happy to join you all. And um, I was just in Vancouver in November. So uh, very, very nice time I had at the aquarium with my family. Um, yeah, so it is Grenada. I do have to correct you. Grenada also exists. It is an island off the coast of Spain. Grenada is in the Caribbean. <laughs> So, um, yes, yeah, so um, I do a lot of these talks during Black History Month. It's just something that I enjoy doing. Um, and uh, so I really appreciate that you're interested. Um, and I decided to do something regional. Um, so it's focused on BC and you might find some interesting tidbits. Um, and if you're really up on your history, I probably maybe have not taught you anything, but that's okay. Um, and I learned a lot doing it. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy to, to, to get started. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to pause me even throughout the presentation. I don't mind being briefly interrupted, um, especially if you need to clarify something. So um, yeah, I'll get started right now. This is a, a talk on being black in British Columbia, resiliency and erasure. And my name is Kathleen Johnson. You can find me on all my social media at the same, on the same handle at KMJ Diversity. Um, I am in uh, Calgary and this is um, Treaty 7 territory, region three, Métis region three. So we acknowledge the traditional territories and practices of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Tutsina and Stony Nakoda nations. Uh, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. Um, now, um, Black History Month um, was started by um, a, a, a Black American um, in 1926. His name was Carter G. Woodson, and he launched a week-long celebration of Black history in the United States. In 1976, President Gerald Ford officially recognizes Black History Month. So it was a week and then it turned into a month. Black History Month is also celebrated in Canada, Ireland, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. There we go. Um, so who brought Black History Month to Canada? Um, it was Jean Augustine, and she happens to be Grenadian. Uh, so that was a point of pride for me. In 1995, Jean Augustine introduced the bill to celebrate Black History Month into the House of Commons. 
1996, Black History Month has, is celebrated now across Canada. Um, she was a certified teacher in Grenada, and she came to Canada on the Caribbean Canadian Domestic Program in 1960. Uh, my mother also came here um, in the early 70s on the same program. Um, she earned a master's in education and sat on the boards for York U and the Hospital for Sick Children and more. She was a key advisor to the formation of multicultural policy in 1971. Uh, was there slavery in Canada? Yes, there was. Um, slavery in Canada existed from 1671 to 1834 in what it was New France, which is now Quebec. Um, two thirds were indigenous, one third were black and slavery was abolished in the British Empire in 1834. So there was no large plantations here, um, but the same harsh conditions existed as you can imagine. Um, slavery continued in the United States until 1865 so freed blacks or blacks that were brought that had bought their freedom um, started arriving in Canada to escape via the Underground Railroad, um, heralded by Sojourner Truth, who was a humanist. Um, she was not a religious woman actually. And um, she has famously said that she could have freed more slaves if they knew they were slaves. Um, so this was cut quite an ingrained system. Um, and uh, interesting tidbit, um, here in BC, the Haida and Tlingit, I'm sorry if I butchered that, people of the Pacific Northwest were slave traders. Um, so early settlers uh, were escaping um, oppression in the United States. And a lot of them that uh, settled in BC came from San Francisco, not all of them, but um, the majority of them. Um, and they were encouraged to migrate to BC by the then governor of the territory before it was a province um, by James Douglas, who himself was a biracial man and he wanted to increase the population. Um, so newly freed enslaved people were looking um, to escape US laws that continued to oppress them, such as having to carry ID, not being allowed to mine for gold and basically take part in the commerce of, of the state and not being able to prosecute anyone white. Early on, the population flourished and espoused British Columbia's beauty and lack of prejudice. So a lot of uh, people, people that came early on um, were like, wow, this is a beautiful place and nothing like what's going on in the States is going on here. After the abolition of slavery, African-Americans started going back to the US as BC was starting to practice segregation in amenities like theaters and churches. So a little bit of a history timeline um, of black settlement in BC. So people first started to arrive from San Francisco. They settled in areas like Salt Spring and Vancouver Island. And as time went on, they became key workers on passenger trains. Um, Jimi Hendrix's grandmother lived in Hogan's Alley in Vancouver, a popular black settlement for porters and their families with a legacy that has since been erased. So the first settlers arrived in 1858 with 600 um, people coming from mostly from the San Francisco area. And they settled, like I said, in Salt Spring and Victoria. Um, in, the in the 1860s, uh, many people um, were relieved to be free from oppressive laws in the US. Um, but by the end of the 1860s, they started to go back to the US um, when the 13th Amendment was passed. In Hogan's Alley, um, night, as was formed in 1911, and Nora Hendricks, uh, Jimi Hendrix's grandmother, was one of the people that are, were first to arrive to this area. Um, and in 1960 and beyond, um, more um, people from the Black diaspora started coming from the Caribbean, Africa, and the UK, and they settled in Vancouver mostly. Um, and then by the 1960s, um, Hogan's Alley was destroyed, um, and that was for urban renewal, urban development. And by 1972, the Georgia Street Viaduct was built over it. So notable Black figures in BC history um, where I found some interesting people, um, Nora Hendricks, as I've mentioned before. Um, this is a picture in the middle there of black train porters. Um, so those were porters on the, uh, on the train were 
were mo majority black. Um, Josephine Sullivan, um, she was one of the first residents of North Vancouver and uh, Rosemary Brown, who was a politician. So Josephine Sullivan was born in the District of Columbia in 1819. She died in Vancouver in 1894. And she was the first black woman pioneer to settle North Vancouver. Um, she's quite a colorful character actually. Um, she established the Fountain Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, and she was pretty well known around town. Um, and she owned a hotel um, called the Gold Hotel. And uh, black sleeping car porters as they were called um, were um, almost all CP rail Porters were black. They tended to have university degrees, but were relegated to subservient jobs. Low wages, um, they had low wages and they were responsible for things that went missing and they had to pay for their uniform and meals. Um, there also was no accommodations for them. Um, so they just kind of slept sitting up <laughs> when they were traveling. Um, Canadian unions for railroad employees would not allow them in. So um, they formed the order of sleeping car porters and negotiated separately with their union um, with the Canadian National Railway. Hogan's Alley in Vancouver was a stopover for porters as it was near the railway and then it just became a community. Um, Hogan's Alley was destroyed in 1960 um, along with other black settlements in BC to make way for urban development. Uh, so Rosemary Brown, she was a feminist writer and educator. She was the first black woman elected to provincial legislature in BC. She ran for federal um, office with the NDP party in 1975 and served for 14 years. She came from Jamaica in 1950 and she founded the British Columbia Association for the Advancement of Colored People. She worked on housing and employment initiatives mostly. Um, she received honor, honorary doctorates from Queens, McGill, Dalhousie, U of T, and U of University of Victoria in UBC. And then she became a professor at Simon Fraser um, in 1988, and she died in 2003. So um, Vancouver's Black neighborhoods. There's three or possibly more historical Black settlements in BC before Hogan's Alley. Communities like in Vancouver, North Vancouver, and the Gulf Islands. Um, as quickly as they were formed, they were pretty much disbanded and torn down. Um, early settlers formed local militia in Vancouver, um, but were barred from marching and ceremony, so they moved on. Um, driven out, they were pretty much driven out of areas, um, what the city call at the time called slum clearance. <laughs> and uh, for over 50 years, um, Canadian immigration policy was focused on keeping undesirables out. Um, now, I remember when this policy changed because that's when my parents came here. Um, Hogan's Valley Society, co-chaired by Adam Rutter, is a descendant of Black Vancouverites and says Vancouver's Black history feels like it's invisible. So um, in conclusion, I know I ran, I ran through that pretty quickly, but I wanted to leave a more time for conversation. Um, black historical settlements, settlements in Canada as a whole have a pattern of, Eur of erasure. Um, when you think of Africville in Nova Scotia um, and some other areas in Toronto, in Alberta, we had um, Amber Valley, um, pretty much it's, it's gone. Yet the people descended from these places still remember and they live on to preserve what they can. There's a series that started on CBC yesterday called The Porter. Um, it looks really good. So if you want some information, some entertainment on this issue, um, please watch that show. So questions and answers. And um, every Black History Month, I work to ensure that a little more is shared to advance the education of Canadians. Um, in the ways Black people have contributed to the landscape of Canada. I hope you leave richer and share this knowledge. Thank you.